Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions, where we're critical, not cynical, about the music we listen to. I'm your host Brian and we're going to check out a special selection for today, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. If you have your own song you'd like to submit for special selection, you can find a link to do so in the description below. Today's, to, today's selection comes out as from Donovan. After Dinner, Glass Tube, from the live album Souvenir Cassette, 1988. Alright, let's dive into this, see what's going on here with Glass Tube, from the band After Dinner. I can't help but think this, the the band is after dinner and all I hear is silverware clattering. Beautiful opening though, I love this uh, duet right here. I'm really trying to get past this uh, artistic decision here. It's just so distracting and maybe that's the point, but I'm not too keen on it quite yet. We'll see.
really interesting resolution there, though. I was really expecting it to just stay in that. I mean, I just found a new way to add tension. Sub based, golly. So many little moments of beauty, and that was. I like that. There's so many moments of beauty in that last section, though, that <laughs> just get undercut. Uh, like four or five notes of really beautiful harmony, and then they'll just punctuate it with some dissonance. Speaking of sub bass. rock kind of thing going on in the background. distortion a, little, a lot of compression on the background stuff not so much on the vocals though
you got a slow detuning of that guitar solo. What? <laughs> um, so interestingly, I have two primary thoughts on this. One of them is, what did I just listen to? This was a very interesting, strange combination of musical ideas that I don't think wholly fit together. And we'll dive into that in a little bit because I, I'm, I mean, it's, it's intentional. <laughs> it's got to be intentional. There's, there's too many things going on here that uh, we'll, we'll talk about in a second because I, I think this is a really neat idea. The second idea is how did somebody so eloquently put my brain into music? Not that my brain is just constantly chaotic, but as far as music goes in my head what gets stuck in my head and stuff like that um and like when i listen to music what memories or connections get triggered this is that kind of um i like musicals primarily because they feel the most real to me out of many uh, film tropes or genres, I suppose we can call them. People breaking out into song, especially at their most emotional, is just such a normal thing in my life, and it kind of boggles my mind. I don't hear about this more or see it more in film musicals, are still kind of a niche genre or elements of a genre. I guess you can have a thriller musical too i mean it's any genre where they're singing in it there's romantic there's family there's horror-esque um actually i guess sweeney sweeney, sweeney todd's kind of like a horror film thriller nonetheless uh play film whatever angle you want to go on that um you know most people think musicals and they think disney and and stuff like that but uh you know, West Side Story, <laughs> uh, which, funny I bring that up, is another fantastic Stephen Sondheim musical. Um, but, yeah, it's just singing in a, in a play or in a film. You can really do it in any show. Anyways, I'm getting off topic here. I sing all throughout the day. I really do. My kid joins in on me. Uh, you know, we have little jingles for, like, lunchtime and, and bedtime and little things that get sung uh, at these moments, uh, well, we used to, my kid got tired of hearing them <laughs> after a few years, but, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I like music. I don't know if that's come across. I mean, maybe this is news to some people. I like music. I do. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'll break out into song throughout the day and it's mostly more of that musical theater kind of style, uh, of music. But my brain is also filled with a lot of rock and metal, thanks to uh, everyone in this community. That's sort of the musical style that we've pushed into with these reactions. Um, but I also listen to a lot of stuff outside of that classical and jazz and pop. And I've, you know, I've tried my hand at some hip hop and, um, you know, I check out country and electronica. Like, I try to absorb as much as I can. Um... So I have a lot of musical ideas and stuff, you know, that I also 
I'm, I'm a composer, I make music, I write music, so, you know, brand new ideas are popping up in my head too. So, my head is usually filled with earworms, catchy hooks, um, you know, beautiful, you know, violin duets that I just heard the other day that get stuck in my head, uh, little songs that I want to sing, and I do, and it's it's this mishmash of a lot of genres going off in my head and I'll hear something in my head oh that reminds me of something else and I'll think about oh you know I, that was a classical track but that melody reminded me of <laughs> Linkin Park so now I'm thinking about rock music and um, it's it's kind of chaotic up in there but it all makes sense to me and that's what I get out of this this is a very chaotic track not in the way that there's a lot going on at any given time, but that there's a lot going on across the entirety of the 10 minute runtime. There is several ideas, uh, many of them contrasting heavily with what comes around it and sometimes even within it. Um, delayed, poppy ish vocals uh, with violins and compressed pushed into the background space rock those aren't really ideas that typically go together uh very strongly and i'm not even going to argue that i think they found a way to make them work here every single time but there's always elements that are clashing with each other either uh you know an idea what it transitions into or even within a single idea it is a lot of a lot and i started to think of the album art while listening to this let me bring this back up uh so we can look at this real quick there's a lot of really interesting things going on in here first of all we have what seems to be a kind of looks like a paper cutout over here with our red doll person but it also looks like someone just took a photo of themselves and then used the cut tool in Photoshop or, uh, you know, Affinity Photo or whatever have you, uh, image editing software, and cut themselves out and then used a um, color correction tool to add a hue to it and made the whole thing red. There's also a random shoe down here <laughs> um, that I just... I don't know. Uh, we have an old school bike with the really big tire in front. Kind of comical today, but reminds me of like 1920s kind of stuff. And then this thing here looks like cutouts from several different uh, pieces of media on our table, which the table and the walls appear to be animated, kind of. They have pastel colors. Unlike everything else, these don't seem to be cutouts of real pictures. Or, or even clip art even, this looks like it is something that was hand drawn. On the wall is a picture of the same setting, but a hand holding the doll and leaning it towards the table. And then all of this is framed. There's actually a this is not just the album art. This is a picture within the album art because the album art has a white border that doesn't encompass all of it. And it's not equidistant. All the sides are different. We have a thin left side, a thicker bottom side, nothing on the right, and a thick top side that houses the band name, and the album name. This is a mishmash of so many ideas. It is... In the art world, we would call it a collage. Sort of. I actually don't know. <laughs> it To me, it's, it's, it's mixed media, which reminds me of collage, but it, it kind of isn't a collage, I think, because a collage would be like, you got to fill up the page, and maybe I'm just thinking of like very specific collage. Anyways, we have mixed media here, though, and I think that's the primary point I want to I wanna get to. And I was applying this to the song, the song also feels like a series of ideas that were hand-picked and possibly even cut out of other ideas. It feels like 
a multimedia project across the same type. Whereas with the album art, we have cutouts from various other, uh, you know, pictures. This would be cutouts of various other musical ideas, other audio tracks. Um, but I don't know if I would call it Plunder Phonics because I don't know how much of this was actually taken from something outside of the artist and how much of it was crafted from within. I didn't hear anything in here that reminded me of anything else. I don't have an encyclopedic mind about every music and every song that's ever been crafted, so I'm not going to use that as empirical evidence to say that this isn't plunder phonics. But everything here sounded new and unique to me. So I'm going to go off the angle that, much like I'm assuming that the cutout of the character, the, the red doll in our album art is possibly our vocalist or maybe the only person in the project um yeah the only thing i have is that this was written by hako or hako um but i don't know who that is i don't have a picture or anything so um it definitely feels like a one person project though Especially since it did not come out in 1988, as I was confused by. It appears that that is possibly the album name, is Souvenir Cassette 1988. Uh, it was released... Oh, wait, you know what? Let me double check this. Okay, so after dinner... All right, so this was 1980. Okay, After Dinner is an art pop, progressive pop, avant prog band formed in 81 by frontwoman Heiko. And she does kind of look like the person. Oh, this is their only album, too. It does look like the uh, person in the artwork. So this is even interesting. 1988 was a good year. Uh, the interesting thing is, though, this doesn't feel like 1988. <laughs> There's so much of this that feels very modern. All right. Getting off topic, though. We got to get back to the... Uh, the collage idea, the, the mixed media. So, yeah. it's it's a, It feels like a series of ideas that they've written. And put together in this track in a way that allows them all to feel distinct and separate how but also uh designed to be observed as a whole much like the mixed media uh album art where each element it does feel distinct it certainly feels like it comes from its own uh type of uh visual media but it's also presented in a way that showcases a room with a person in it and a painting on their wall and a table with some stuff on it. And that's what the music is to me. It is collage music, which is kind of bonkers. But what does it mean, right? So we, we have an understanding of possibly how it was crafted and why it sounds so odd but most people don't just make odd music for odd music's sake. Usually there's a reason, an emotion, a feeling that they're trying to showcase through their their craft, their art. And unfortunately, I just don't have that answer. I had a very difficult time connecting with this outside of, hey, this is how my brain works, which maybe that's the point. I don't, I'm trying to, take this idea of glass tube what does that mean how can i interpret that into the music because the music itself doesn't tell me anything other than chaos it does have sort of a stream of consciousness idea to it but i'm not too sure i want to assign that descriptor to it yet because i feel like that is comp i mean all of my musical readings are biased it is what I got out of the music. That's the, the main definition of that. But I also feel like too much of that idea. 
that this is a stream of consciousness song comes from my relationship to the music and how it reminds me of my brain in its stream of consciousness form when it just flows from one idea to another and i'm not like i said i'm not too sure i want to particularly assign that to uh, artistic meaning yet we'll see though we'll see but that's really the only thing i get out of it it's it's such a disconnected track that I, I have a tough time reading what it's trying to say because there doesn't really feel like there's a unified message. Through that, though, we get some really interesting ideas. And I want to touch on this real quick. Um, I, it's not really much of an analysis. I just want to point out some really neat ideas that uh, were present in here. First of all, I already kind of touched on it, but that uh, that poppy style almost moving into an operatic type of singing mixed with uh, some orchestral string styles and space rock. It almost felt like we had some, uh, some per not Pearl Jam. Uh, why can't I think of the band who does Dark Side of the Moon? <laughs> uh, we've checked out, we checked their stuff out too. I don't know. I'm not going to be happy until I know. Pink Floyd. I have no idea where Pearl Jam came from. Yeah, it sounds like we have some of Pink Floyd's spacier ideas behind this pop style of singing. And the singing wasn't really doing anything with the rock music. They were kind of separate, but going at the same time. Not to mention that the... Space rock was also very subdued, pushed into the mix, compressed, uh, a bit distorted even. Not just the instruments, but the track as a whole. It's one of the things that points me towards this collage idea, is that very rarely are individual instruments given specific uh, effects put on them. It's usually the instrument tied to... Uh, a larger sound like this had the guitar and the drums and both of them had the same effects on them almost as if she dropped a track it well it was 88 i don't know if they had audio workstations like we do now but you drop an mp3 file in today and you cut out the piece you want and then you just apply the effects uh indiscriminately to that track rather than to the instruments on the track that's what it sounded like which is just <clears throat> It's a bizarre way of going about crafting music, but again, it fits really well with this mixed media collage style. Um, there was also the idea at the beginning to put a delay on her vocals to get a one-to-one -one delay. There is no extra reverb. Um, there is no uh, anything done to it. It is literally what I sing. I want to sing. I want to have sung again in the left side like a second and a half later. But they put a kill switch on it. And so on the beat, which was in 3.6.8 uh, at the time, on every beat, this echo, because that's what it was, is an echo. It's not really a reverb. It's, it's a direct echo. Uh, full power echo. It's not softer or quieter. Like I said, there's no reverb, nothing to diminish it. It is a one-to-one -one copy. It gets shut off for a brief second, and it is the most distracting thing i think i've ever heard in music uh it, it uh, that's hyperbolic but i do really th i'm trying to think of like times in the past i've talked about things that are distracting or possibly even uh a little annoying kind of get on my nerves that we've listened to it's not a topic that comes up too often because i try to be mostly positive about the music i listen to but i really can't think of anything that is as offensive to me personally uh as this and that's not to say it's bad or wrong it's just it's distracting <laughs> and it did get a bit annoying for me after a while and again maybe that's the point of it but i i i don't know it it really takes the cake for an effect that just absolutely pulls me out of the song and causes me to look specifically at the fact that this is music and not art and try to figure out what my ear is hearing and why I'm not enjoying it. Um, 
which kind of speaks a lot to the fact that I listen to this music, all music on the channel critically. I'm always kind of digging into the nitty gritty of it. I'm uh, interpreting it as more than just the emotional, casual listen of the music. This pulled me out even further past that. It, 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 very unique. <laughs> I think that's the positive spin on this. Very unique. Um, and there's so many other things in here that were just very interesting that I don't remember. But one thing I do want to touch on is sound effects. So many ambient ideas in this track, stuff at the beginning. Uh, I don't even remember what they were, just a lot of ambient noise at the beginning. Um, there was bottles clinking at one point. I think that was during or right before the string duet. Oh, we might have to talk about that too. That was something. Um, there's also the random clapping at one point, like an audience clapping, um, which came up twice. After, the second time was after the guitar solo when the track was over, which made sense at that point. <laughs> Uh, the other time, though, was in the middle of the song, not even in the, not even as a transition, which I think would make sense because you could even say that it's storytelling where the first half is something prior to a show. Then the curtain rises, you got your clapping, and then the second half of the song would be the show itself, which finishes with the guitar solo and the clapping to finish out the track. Like, I, I can kind of see that, but the clapping actually comes in after the section starts. We get like six beats, sorry, six bars into this new idea, and then there's clapping. So it makes the clapping feel like part of the music rather than an, an ambient element of storytelling, which... I think that's the frustrating part with this is I keep picking up on these little details and I'm like, oh, you know, if this kind of went that way, I, I could see this as this thing. And like, I'm starting to retroactively go through all the ideas in the song. Like, is this the story of preparing for a show and then performing it? Maybe I can kind of go with that angle in some places, but not everything fits. And then it makes me ask questions. Well, why didn't they do that? It feels very fit for that, but there's several key moments that dispel that reading of it. And so then I'm like, well, what are they trying to say then? And it's it, it's very rare, I think, for a song to leave me with more questions than answers. And not in a, a I was going to say a fun way. This is kind of a fun way. Uh, but not in a, a more traditional method of, uh, you know, me catching on most of the ideas and, um, you know, it's very typically straightforward. There's a couple of moments of like, oh, you know, what, what was that about then? This just, it, it, it goes completely against a lot of how I approach music, both the creation of it and the breaking down of it. Um, and it just makes it very difficult for me to analyze it in a lot of ways, figure out what it's doing. Well, I should say what it's saying. I know what it's doing. It's actually a very simple track when we break down uh, each individual element. But I don't understand how they come together and what it's supposed to say as they come together. The last thing I want to talk about, though, is dissonance. And it kind of ties into that echo that we had at the beginning, um, adding elements to the track that are just not palatable there's a lot of tonation dissonance that we get in the middle of the track and it leads into interestingly a really nice resolution i pointed it out uh, we had all this tension and it wanted to go somewhere it was leading us somewhere and we just kind of sat in there for a while and i felt like we were just going to be there forever and out of nowhere we get a random resolution and i say out of nowhere because so many moments of this track feel timeless. Not like they're classics that are still appreciated today, but lacking time. I mentioned the beginning is in 6-8. I haven't talked about time signature anywhere else, and that's primarily because the 6-8 I really only get out of the kill switch pulse on the left vocals. So many other sections just seem to be lacking a pulse. That's not to say they don't have an intended time signature that if it were transposed, um, 
it wouldn't have a time signature, but that I don't feel one in a lot of places. I can kind of lean into an intended one when the violins come in. It feels like we're in 4-4 four, four because I can count four B I can count I can count groupings of four, but I don't know the beginnings of phrases and the ends of phrases. At best, I can get a tempo because I can group beats together, but I don't know how best to group them together. I don't know how long phrases are. It feels like a lot of this track is done in free time, which is the absence of a time signature. You basically just play whatever you want, whenever you want. with an intended tempo. Free time can be completely free, but if you have an intended tempo, you still have a beat. Your phrasing is just not tied to anything else. Um, and that's what I think is going on in a lot of this. It isn't really until we bring in the drums in a couple of those rock places, uh, the guitar solo at the end, I think, and that Pink Floyd Spacey vibe, where the drums provide us a, not only just a beat, a pulse giving us a tempo, but also a phrasing, which is going to give us our time signature. Um, so yeah, just very dissonant, uh, and, uh, not dissonant, uh, I mean, we do have dissonance in a lot of places, but just not palatable ideas. Most people like to groove with their music. The, having a repetition, a, a phrase that you can lean into and provide an expectation for how the song is supposed to flow rhythmically is such an, a crucial aspect of music for social uh, activities. Um, you know, not even just... So I mean, social activities for sure, because we, then we include dance and we can take this idea all the way back to you know, thousands of years ago to the creation of music for use in rituals, and there's still a rhythmic groove to it. There's patterns to it. It's such an integral aspect of music. Um, to not utilize patterns and groove and rhythm in the music and for it all to kind of feel floaty and timeless is to push against a lot of the core DNA of what makes a, I'd even say a good song, as far as 99% of people would be concerned. And of course, I say that because I don't think you can ever quantify what is a good song. There's no rules to making a good song. But you present a song without a pulse, and a majority of people, regardless of what they listen to, are not really going to get it or possibly even enjoy it. So I think I've talked enough here about what's going on and what I heard. We're going to dig into the very short lyrics here and I don't even know, maybe have a glimmer of insight. Flying through a dark gray tube, quivering eyes and little flowers. Well, a chimney sweeper flies away. See you later. Waving adieu. Well, fragments, falling like rain, shade my eyes with my hands. Well, going home, a house in white, flowers in a kaleidoscope, blooming, flying through a dark gray tube, quivering eyes and little flowers. Blowing away through my lungs, voices come from a cocoon. Look, fragments, falling like rain, dancing barefoot, fishes being inhaled into a little glass bottle. You know, normally I I stop <laughs> in the lyrics, but it's usually when I have a thought I want to add. Or at the end of stanzas. There's no stanzas here. This is just one big block of text. Um, at no moment in here did I think, oh, I have something to add to this, or this recontextualizes something I heard, or I can pair this with some music, or I understand what's being said. Um, interestingly, I didn't hear any of this in the song either. And I wonder if this is a translation or if there's just some heavy effects being put on the on the vocal work. Because um, it's not like they're 
enunciated poorly. It's not like I couldn't hear the words. I just didn't hear these words. Um, so once again, I'm left with more questions than answers. I didn't understand a bit of this. I mean, I can kind of take some of these metaphors away and kind of say, oh, this kind of points to this, this points to this. But once again, it's more of a collage of ideas. I don't really see any connective tissue even in the metaphors that I am understanding where I'll admit most of them go over my head as it is. This track is just a big old mystery box to me. And if anybody has any insight into it, please let me know. Which I guess is just going to take us into our outro here. Those are my thoughts on After Dinner's Glass Tube. Uh, Donovan? Is that who requested this? Yes, Donovan. I hope that... Uh, I hope that analysis satisfied you. It, uh, I don't really feel like I had m many answers. I kind of hope you're more informed on this than I am. Because um, I'm so confused. I, I need answers. Anybody, you know, not even just Donovan. If, if you understand what's going on here, maybe you've listened to this track for decades and you're like, oh, I love this track. This is what it means to me. Just let me know, please. Because I am... I'm lost. I need to hear more of this. I'm actually, I mean, this is their only album. I might even just drop this in tonight and uh, check it out because I'm, I'm very intrigued. It, it's one of those, it's like an art house film, right? It might not be something you watch all the time, but it's definitely something you want to watch once just to see what they do you watch the trailer and you're like that was bonkers i need to I, I need to see what's going on i don't even know if i'm gonna like the film the genre is not even really my thing but you know I, i'm left with so many questions and i can't live like that <laughs> and that's what this 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 is a nice introduction to the album assuming the rest of the album is like this and i need to hear more uh so like i said i might even spin this tonight just to just to, well, I was going to say assuage my brain and, and kind of get some answers, but I think I'm going to be left with even more questions by the end of the album. Uh, anyways, I need to wrap this up. It's getting long. Those are my thoughts. Hit me up in the comments. Anything you want to add. You just want to tell me if you enjoyed it. You got things to add on to what I said. You got things to correct me on or inform me on. Please, please add those comments down there above the comment section is a description box and there's a link for linktree take you to this menu right here it has links for everything related to the channel you can support the channel in a variety of ways pick up merch join the patreon and you can also find a variety of communities around the channel like the discord server or my twitter above that if you could like subscribe and ring the bell i greatly appreciate all three of those that wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to be checking out another track for War Week and our final special selection for the week. Yeah. Uh, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.